What is up, guys? Welcome to another episode of a podcast that we have still yet to name <laughs> at the time of this yeah, we filming. Suck. Yeah, we haven't come up with the name of it yet. We're not doing <clears throat> Slip Angle because there's already a Slip Angle podcast. So um, drop some name suggestions below. But anyways, we just wrapped up filming a pretty fucking epic day, mm -hmm. I have to say, at it Lime sure Rock was. Park today. We did a what was originally going to be a... To Miata shootout, so ITB all motor versus turbocharged Mazda Miata, and then we had Tommy F. Yeah come in at the last minute with his K24 swapped Miata, so we got that in there as well. Today we're going to kind of talk a little bit about, this is the more in-depth detail that we don't really get to go into while we're filming after we had some time to gather our thoughts. It is currently 1.25 a.m. <laughs> So everything's still fresh in our head. We're a little bit tired. We may mumble a little bit, but uh, had about a gram of caffeine each today. Yeah, yeah. we keep. I'm just like you know, <laughs> drinking. I don't. It's not really doing anything. If Bang doesn't you know. get the message by now that they should sponsor, I us, think this I, I this know. this will get you. <laughs> <laughs> Bang, are you listening? <laughs> so let's talk. Let's talk about today. Mm -hmm. Whose car do we want to start with? Let's talk with Matt's. Because we brought, mine, we brought yeah. Matt's off yep. first. So Matt's car is turbocharged. Yep. Tell us a little bit about it just to give a recap. Yep, 94. It's beauty back right here. here. 1.8. Uh, 1 1.8. Uh, flying me out of hardware. Uh, mega squirt ECU. Um, pretty pretty standard for a turbocharged car. Yep. Um, I was really, I've got a 949 racing uh, Zeta coilovers. Uh, 15 by 8 Avanti Storms with uh, uh, Falcon Azenis 205 250 tires nice i was really curious to see because I, I don't have the driving experience that these guys have i was really curious to see their impressions on my car so what do you guys think it's very good um it's it's a car that's that's um gonna benefit a lot from a little bit more setup it's gonna um i think just a little bit more suspension tuning maybe nice corner weight get um you know get the uh, dampening values figured out a little bit of brake bias Yep. Um, had a pretty heavily front brake biased car. It was a little it was the, it was pushy on that on the. Yeah, it's a little bit of tighter corners. Yeah, a little yep. bit of understeer and a lot of lot of brake lock up on the front tires. Not, yep. um, which we made a minor adjustment, but it wasn't yep. quite enough. I, I overcooked it twice. <laughs> little lock up on brakes there. Tires are still cold. Yeah, it was first, pretty easy. First two was laps, just couldn't, I was, I was expecting there to, to stop and, and rotate more, and it just yeah. washed out. Yeah, it's not front. a car you can trail in at the, with the yeah. current setup at all. Yeah. I installed the proportioning valve in it, and yeah. uh, but never tuned it. Yep. So yeah. yeah, so that's where we're at. Yeah, we we'll, need we'll, some we'll tuning. Set that up. But man, what a what a nice car to drive. I I, I love a turbo car. I'm a fourth induction guy. Yeah. It's so funny because like. <clears throat> A, a properly, and you don't even need to go nuts. Like, in Matt's car is like a perfect example for this. Like, mm -hmm. it, just a, a mild turbo setup, a little bit of suspension tuning and tires and brakes. Like, man, it, it just transforms the Car's car. Car's a weapon. Yeah. They're, they're, it really is a budget, like, supercar. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I say that to people. Like, when I would run my turbo car, like, I mean, it, it, they move. Mm -hmm. And, they, and it's the, the all-around performance that you get from the lightweight, the double A-arm suspension. Like, everything that people love about the Miata, it just brings that out to like such a higher level of performance with just a couple of like choice mods and like you can really build a weapon for 10 grand like out mm -hmm. the door car included like it's it's a great car and Matt's, Matt's car is like a perfect example of that and it's a lot of car to handle too like you, yeah. you, it's a car that'll hurt you if you if you don't know what you're doing oh yeah and it, yeah. it's a car that's 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 fast enough to overwhelm you very quickly if you're not not an experienced driver and that was and and so what i thought was pretty interesting again coming from a 1.6 which has a much worse flowing head than the 1.8 mm -hmm. cars um, that turbo is like so well matched to that engine where I have more lag and stuff on mine and mine's like a top end rocket. Like your car was just like right there, near the power. So yeah. like at any corner, if I wanted oversteer, just a little bit more throttle and I got my oversteer. And that's like awesome because having that response, like plus the ability to do that, like you could just pick how you want the car to drive. Yep. And that's, and those are the types of cars that I love. Like I don't like cars where you have to like use more momentum and more aggressive trail braking to get them rotating. And that was one of the things I always hated about my 1.6 cars because the turbo is a little bit larger, a little bit laggier. Mm -hmm. The 1.6 head doesn't flow as well. So you had to use braking and momentum at lower, at tighter corners, which is like, let's face it, when most street corners are second gear corners. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I had to like really like drive the car a lot harder than I wanted to on a street situation. Your car, I feel like it was just beautiful, like 
ready to go right when you want it. Yeah, I mean, even way off boost, like even even way down low in the RPM, you could just you could just give it some feed in some throttle and it would spool, spool right up yep. very quickly. Yep. You, you never left wanting, and and, and I, I really I thought it was really well set up car. It was really terms, evident in terms of the powertrain on the uphill. Yeah. <laughs> The yeah. bottom of the uphill because like any Runky. car like my FD bogs down tremendously there. The red car like if I didn't nail that perfectly like I would bog down and come out of boost. Like Matt's car like it was just in it right. Yeah, there. So that's, that's what I was just thinking yeah. was about the uphill and how easily yeah. it, it just kind of surged right up that uphill with this nice wave of torque. Yeah, really nice. It was good. I, I really I think powertrain wise I think it's really well sorted. Uh, yeah. we, we were really pretty hard on that for a really long time today yep. and we didn't have overheating issues it's got a pretty sorted cooling system it's got basically yeah, all the things everything you can do, you do. yeah um yeah. The, those cars can suffer from heating issues from cooling from it got oh, it got a little hot Temp yeah. did, 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 i watched the gauge go a little bit past the mill but my yeah, honestly my turbo me i would do the same thing yeah. i mean you have to keep in mind that's a that's a very it's a second gear track for the most part, yeah. right? Yeah. Not a lot of airflow. Not a lot of airflow, and we're doing a lot of drifty stuff. And yep. it's a turbo, I mean, you're almost doubling the horsepower of the car. I'm gonna say Matt's car's probably like low 200s at the wheels, mm -hmm. the way it felt, but like, just a great, great balanced car. Yep. Yeah, um, it's, it's, uh, FR stuff is just fun. Yeah. You know, for driving so much MR stuff, I, I become accustomed to, to the dynamics of that stuff, and it's fun to go back to an FR car. It's just so forgiving and so like, it actually kind of like playful. Made me miss my turbo me out a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, now that sure. the turbo setup's for gone. Sure. I, um, I see why so many people do them because they're yeah. it's a really good formula. But one of the great things about it is is that it's gonna be it's just such a great basis. So we have a baseline time from which by the way was a, a 38.70 flat. Um so we're gonna do some tuning and some setup on the car, and mm -hmm. I, that that number is gonna that's a 37 second, maybe even a high 36. There's some, the right some time setup. left in that car for sure. A yeah. little bit, a little bit of corner weighting, a little bit of brake bias, yep. maybe maybe a little wire tire. Yep. Um, so, so should we see how how far we can go without actually changing anything physically on the car? Yeah, that'd be yeah. good. Yeah. Next just, just adjustments. Nice alignment. I, next, yeah. when you're ready for a set of tires, I'd say let's move you up to a 225. 225. Yeah, but in, so, yeah. in the, yeah. the meantime, two, let's do 205 three. Falcon is any RT 615. Whatever the first uh, iteration of the, the Falcon is any. Also, a little bit older, too. Yeah, they, oh, they yeah. got them close out. Yeah, yeah so, which means they were probably timed out, too. Yeah. Right, so new new tires, 225 yeah. with. You, we can get a 225 under stock body line, no problem. Yep. Right, right, wheel and offset. So. Yeah, I, I love the noises it was making. I, I love the uh, forced induction car. Yeah. It's all this chuffing and yep. whooshing, and like just it's, it's there's some theater that's that's kind of nice. Not to mention it shoots flames. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. shoots yeah. big fire out the back. <laughs> it's just it's just a car with a lot of character. I, I love turbocharged cars. Yep, and like once you once you just get up to speed with, like, the way a shorter wheelbase double A arm car acts, like his car was just very cohesive. Like yep. it takes a little bit of ramp up when you get into it. You got to be like, okay. This is how quickly I got to shuffle. This is where my hands got to be when you're trying to like asshole the car more. Yeah, you're right. busy in it. Yeah, sure. oh yeah, definitely. It's a, it's a busy car to drive hard, and, and especially if you've got some yaw. Yep. You're you're working. Oh yeah. Um. Oh my gosh. That's one of the big things I've noticed, uh, just watching you guys drive. Like, I didn't think it was possible to like hold the drift in my car. I thought it just had too short of a wheelbase. Like, but it's like, more, you guys it's are more work, working. but once yeah. you, it, with the right setup, you can make the cars bounce. And, <clears throat> and that's kind of been like the big focal point for my NB. So moving on to the NB, mm -hmm. um, I'm, I consider myself a retired racing driver at this point. I raced Spec Miata for seven years. I autocrossed, raced karts. I mean, I'm done racing competitively for the most part. I just want to enjoy the car. And that's been the core fundamentals of the tuning philosophy for my ITB car is that I want something like, kind of like what Keiichi's Tsushia's A86 Hachiroko is mm -hmm. to him. Like that's what my 99 Miata is to me. It's, the, it's my Hachiroko. I, a86 is a little bit too old and too tinny. These are a little bit more modern, a little bit more rigid. The steel's stronger. Um, the engines are very similar in a lot of ways. But I sacrifice a little bit of all-out grip because I want that balance. And that's been and that's like and that's one of the things that like it's always been the most challenge to me is is finding that balance. Um, I think I got the car dialed in pretty well. There's always room for improvement. Mm -hmm. um, but like today when I, when I got out there with that, so this is my first time on that track with the six speed and, and now there's a 4.1 in there. Um, so a little <clears> bit <throat> shorter gearing overall. I had to get in the third. I was missing third a lot. 
<laughs> going right to fifth because I'm so used to the five speed boxes on these cars. But like, it's just like an old friend when I got out there. Like, I mean, that car, it's just so, I, I've gotten to, to the point where I'm very happy with the setup on it. Um, it could still lay down a decent lap time. It did a 38.12, so a little bit faster than Matt's car. Mm -hmm. um, but again, my car's like, it's a, it's a fully tuned car, but it's, it, you know, it's more extensive than yours. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I, I was struck by how easy it was to extract the performance from it. There's some cars that you get in, you really have to learn how the car wants to be driven. Yep. This car just shows you the way around the track. Yeah. You go. You go toe into this one. You just kind of let it do its thing and it kind of finds a line that it likes and you, it just kind of shows you the way that it wants to be driven and, and, and you kind of just it's a, it's a nice partnership when you're out in the car um, I was I was really impressed with how civilized it was feel, I feel sorted yeah it's you know? definitely I do wish it had more low end but yeah, where, sure. where I've taken the motor at this point that's the trade-off yeah you're, to yeah, increase you power up high end, yeah. it's like you you trade off that lower end power and I, I consider that motor like max at this point. It's, uh, it feels strong. It, 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 it's phenomenal. 6,000 to 8,000 is like the meat. Yeah. It, it's very S2000 like in that regard with just without the VTEC prop. It's just kind of VTEC all the time with the yeah, 264 yeah. degree cams in it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, going fast, it, it, it felt good. It was easy. I laid down three consecutive lap times that were like in that vicinity. So like yeah, it's a repeatable really car. Consistent. Yeah, it's not just like a hero flyer. Um, for the best lap time and hooning it, it was just, it was so much fun. I, and the, it's the noise and the excitement from the throttle bodies. And the response like that, that's really, it's everything that I can like present as like my, this is my best iteration of a car I can make. And that kind of is like my best sorted car to, right now. I was um, really impressed with how easy it was to, to, how finite the adjustability was with the throttle and mid corner. Yeah. You really can focus on just kind of me metering the power so, so accurately because of the ITBs. And you get full, um, it's full throttle range. Yeah. Like Mazda kind of gears a lot of the <clears throat> throttle body. So like half, half pedal is like, almost full throttle like that you get the full range yeah, it's so it's really, very easy to modulate yeah yeah um and and the, the 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 way that you could focus on the cornering of the car because of that really linear power delivery you could really kind of kind of focus on the chassis setup and where your cornering lines were and you could really pay attention to the chassis yep the the, mo the, the engine just kind of gives you gives you lets you focus on that and and it, it, it's not something where it demands a bunch of your attention to go quickly in it right um, because of the engine setup there's no proportioning valve in that but no. there's definitely more rear brake bias in yeah. that car mm -hmm. um it's probably a little bit to the car <coughs> tech pad setup that i have in there but i i'm very happy how that car rotates on brakes it yep. gets i just think it's that's mm -hmm. what i like what do you have for a pad setup in terms of the um coefficient of friction front to rear are they the same? Are they same compound front same and rear? Same compounds. Okay. okay. Carbotech XP8 front and rear. Okay. Well, it's um, good for people to know if they're gonna if they're trying to set. Yeah, I, 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 those pads have been on there forever. They've seen multiple track days. I, I mean, I went there with less than an eighth of pad on the front for each side, and like it, there's still pad on there. I brought pads with me just in case. <laughs> yeah. I had to do a quick change, but <clears throat> I didn't have to. So. The, the only, my only complaint about it was the rubbing of the fender well when we were going really hard. It was distracting. Oh yeah, my 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 fender liner rivet is like. It, it split, so like the fender line on the driver's side was like falling off and it was rubbing a lot. So if you hear rubbing, that's what it was. It actually wasn't rubbing on the fender. Yeah. I was, I was pretty impressed with the Toyos. They, they broke away really progressively. Oh, beautifully nice, balanced. I was nice actually surprised at how hoonable they were. Mm. I thought that car was going to be a lot more like effort and Those momentum. Are R, R1Rs, R1Rs, Toyo R1Rs. R1Rs, R1Rs, R1Rs 200, R1Rs. Tribe, they, they, they performed great. Yep. Good grip, good balance, good hoonability. Yeah, no complaints about them today. Yep. So last car was Tommy Effiaz K24 swap. Um, <laughs> Raw. That is a... Raw. It's an interesting yep. <laughs> car. Um, really cool. K swap is awesome power. Mm -hmm. 
That's right. ultimately the next step I want to take my car. And today just kind of really sealed the deal for that. Yeah, um, solidified that a little bit. That car is raw as fuck. It was, it it's is, unfinished. It's un- it, yeah. it's, it's, he it's, literally he just, just got, it, got it done. Yeah. yeah. But and like, it, as far as like the, the, the setup on it, the platform, he corner balanced and aligned that thing, like just about as good as you can get. And that car was the, like it, it, you picked an angle that you wanted and yeah, did super, it. Yeah. Super agreeable. And it also, Olin's road and track. Is that the, the, what those are? Uh, DFWs or yeah. DFVs, I think. Olin, whatever. The, They're Olin's DF anyway. something. Yeah. Okay. Um, I thought the damping was really well judged and it, you could, you could, from driving the three cars, that was my favorite suspension setup. Yep. Uh, which is Olin's. I mean, it's going to be yeah, going to be good. They're they're awesome. Um, yeah. That K motor, the K twenty fours, it had that had that nice torque. That it was naturally aspirated, but it had still had the. I was third gear and, whole yeah. time, hooning it or driving <clears> fast. Third gear, yeah. it had torque power on tap, like whenever you needed it. There was it yeah. was it was an, it, it, like a re, you were like inundated with noise and vibration, and heat. It was like you were just like being like. I, I think my anus was bleeding a little bit. <laughs> I feel like when I came off the track and that thing, Tommy came up and he's like, how do you like me? He's like, holy fuck, you're sweating. You're, I was like, dude, I'm fucking roasting in here. Yeah. <laughs> dude, when you go on K24, you're oh out my, of shit. Holy shit. <laughs> dude, I'm sweating. I'm dying in here. It's, I mean, it's, it's, it, there's a lot of, could, that could be done to refine that, that yeah. car. Um, but I think it's in a, at a stage of its development where it's not complete yet, and it's just in kind of a shakedown mode. Yeah. Um, and so stuff's rubbing on stuff and creating all sorts of resonant frequencies and stuff. I think the big thing there is the, the his hard, he said his hard top rubbed against his uh, roll bar. Well, yeah, and, and the I exhaust hit, was rubbing yep. against transmission or something. It was, there was a lot I mean, of I, like... Yeah. It's a Frankenstein car, right? Yeah. So you're doing, a, you're kind of like re-engineering stuff. Yeah, and it's, it's not it's easy. Research it's and development easy. is gonna need yeah. to happen for a car like that. It's a bunch of parts that don't belong together getting forced to work together yeah. and so it's going to take some time to just work through all the little bugs and stuff but yep. fundamentally yeah. holy shit if he sticks with that car, car and he gets all the little annoying things like sorted out maybe makes it a little bit more street friendly that would be a, a wonderful car yeah. as a track day toy that car is awesome yeah and awesome. You, could, you could make that thing refined if you wanted to oh you absolutely can't no, i don't think there's anything fundamentally unrefined about that swap it's so funny it's too like coming out of his car and like getting back in the mine i was like what? and i if i drive that for a little while on its own like i'm like fuck this car like it's a little bit jarring because all poly bushings in my car. This thing feels like a fucking ES three hundred. Dude, it was like crazy. <laughs> I was like, wow, this thing feels so fucking pimpy. Yeah. Like getting out I just of kept thinking to myself, it's like a, it's like Lexus set this thing up. It's all like oh, it NVH crazy. is low, everything's soft, yeah. covered with suede. It's like it's like feeling like a fucking Mercedes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was like Tommy's car is just like getting like prison raped. <laughs> 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 But Tommy's car laid down the fastest time. Yeah. He did a thir- uh, I mean, 37.66. That, that, that K-series is light up front, so taking a bunch of weight off the front axle. It's got Point a ton of grunt. Feet. It's got great mid-range. Yep. Um, the only thing I felt, the only thing I, that I, where I was driving, and I was like, I wish it would do X, and the X was, I wish it had a little bit more crescendo at top. The K24 yeah. kind of flattened out, like a real was, high RPM. I, I, I thought the same thing. I think too, it needs like, cams. That's, if that was my car, that would be the next I thing. I think it was more evident because I came out of that where that's like yeah, top end this, screens. You yeah, know? just gets um, better and better and better in yeah. crescendo. It's beautiful. But that torque was fucking awesome. Yeah, like, grunty. Cool. And yeah. like that, that car, you felt the weight difference by having the, I mean, this was the lightest car of the bunch today. Yeah, you could um, trail it in really nice. It had really you good just corner picked bike. what you want, and the yeah. car did it. Like yeah. lightweight is such a good thing to have in a car. Like, yeah, and that's where the are just wonderful. Is that they're a lightweight tuning platform with a good suspension. That's all. That's that's the that's the Miata's like magic formula that everybody falls in love with. Mm-hmm. It's just that double A arm lightweight car, short wheel Simplify, base. add lightness. It really yeah, is. Yeah. Like yeah. I mean, I can't deal with stock Miata power. Like I yeah. like go nuts, but like. That's that's what makes them great, and they're great tuning platforms because of that. Yeah, I mean, we keep preaching the benefits of lightness. Yeah, it's it, it, time and time again, it proves itself to be on track. It's the holy grail. And you forget about that because when we're in a we're in a world <clears throat> of modern cars with with just shit after mm-hmm. shit, like compound inside them, the weight goes up. They're more numb. They're more muted. Like you have to like sometimes take a step back and just go and drive something like that to like really appreciate that again yeah nothing's analog anymore ever nothing yeah, it, yeah. every car you go and buy is just oh, sound electric deadened. power steering and, and yeah sort of, yeah <clears throat> guys you gotta take a quick break uh hang tight so to wrap up today let's talk about let's just give the highlights of each car what we liked what we didn't like and we'll we'll rank them there so uh matt's turbocharged miata fantastic platform really close to being a really well-sorted uh, sports car. Um, 
you know, it's for a budget supercar that you can make yourself pretty easy, a pretty easy formula to, to duplicate for everybody. Uh, Flying Me Out has always got their shit together. Um, yeah. Yep. You know, I did a lot of research on, on turbo kits. There's a lot of different routes I could have gone. And everybody just goes, says the same thing. The yeah. flying me out of hardware is just, it's been tested. It's, it's been so yeah. complete, tested. Tried and true. Yeah. It's nice yeah. because like it works and there's no yeah. weird rattles or vibrations. Like I had down pipes and stuff in my car that were like hit subframes. Like I went through a couple before I got one that actually like fit when I was upgrading stuff. So it's yeah. flying yeah. me out does a great job packaging mm-hmm. that all together. Yes, Keith Tanner, flying me out. Yep. Yeah. 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 Flying me out if you're listening, you know, you want to, you want to sponsor the channel. And, That'd be cool. Yeah. And Keith, Keith is active on the forums. Yep. He's providing uh, he, support. Like that guy takes, lives and breeds the business. Yeah. Absolutely, he's, he is dedicated to the to that business. Yep, and he makes sure that people are. I think it's a. I think it's great business. It's, right. They're very passionate. And that's send awesome. Us, send us some money. Yeah, I put yeah. in the order on that on that <laughs> turbo kit. Flying me out, sponsor our shit. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> when I put in the order for my for my turbo kit from Flying Me Out, I called just to get an idea of like how long it would take. He answered the phone. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. That, that's those, that's they're they're, they're yeah. guys that are passionate about me out, as you yep. know, and that's that's awesome. We need the, the motorsport world needs people like that. Yep. You know, mm-hmm. if every car brand can have a company that's that dedicated, that's that's a good thing. Yep. Yeah, I mean, they give a shit about the, the quality. They give a shit about the customer service. You know, they're, they're yep. You know, it's awesome. And the so. product and the in the and the outcome shows speaks for itself. It, absolutely. What, I, if any it, it, in, <clears> when <throat> anybody asks me what they recommend for a turbo setup, find me out. Just yep. do it. Yep. yep. You're gonna spend about at least five grand for the whole, and I'm talking everything, clutch and all that cooling, just go with their stuff. Yep. Yeah, so I mean, just a couple more things to, to, to just kind of tune in, yep. and that thing's gonna be a fucking monster. Yep. It's gonna be a really good car. Uh, and, it's, and it's hilarious now. Yeah, um, a lot so of I fun. Mean, like if you just left it alone, it'd be satisfying for, you know, yep. 90% of the people. Maybe I'll tighten the brake lines next time. Yeah, oh, so we had, a, we had a little brake <laughs> break failure on track. One of those, he's got Will, Willwood calipers yeah. in the front. Yeah. And uh, while I was out on track, one of the uh, one of the bleeders. It was a fitting. Fit, it was oh, a fitting for fitting. the stainless steel line. Okay. Bit, yeah. um, backed out and Pell just went to the floor. Yeah. Um, no fanfare. It actually happened at kind of a kind of a good, good time, time to right? happen. So yeah. it um, wasn't going ten tenths. Yep. Um, Tightened it. And it was so just I was fine. able to st- stop on the parking brake yeah. and and pulled the car back in. But man, there's always always a moment when you're when you're going into a corner and the pedal just goes funk right to the floor. Yeah. When you hear it hit the bulkhead, that's good. you're like, oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> it's, not, it's just not good. Um, At least it didn't happen while you were going 60 on the track. Yeah. 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 So that, that worked out pretty nicely, and we were able to just tighten it up and then... Um, Check the other side, and the other side was loose, too. Yeah. Yeah. So just so. been heat cycled, and we had, yeah. you know, I had just come, come, uh, come and parked on the side of the track to, to set up the V-Box, and that, that time cooling down must have been enough to let, let things just kind of contract a little bit and loosen up. So a good thing for <clears throat> you guys doing track days and stuff, it's always a good idea to kind of check your hardware. Yeah, every, nut and bolt your then. shit every yep. time. Shit rattles loose. Heat, yep. heat breaks stuff loose. Therm- and, and, thermal and expansion. rattles yep. break things loose. Yeah, it's a punishing environment. And so the, yep. your maintenance schedule needs to be, uh, you know, adhered to pretty carefully. So, um, so yeah, I, I think that car is really in the, in, within striking distance of being... Yeah. Very well sorted. So, and we're, and we're gonna we're gonna go through that process. It'll be fun to watch. And know, we're awesome. we're gonna turn the boost up to like eighteen pounds. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And then we'll be doing rod installs. Yeah. No way, dude. <laughs> no way. Good tune. Yeah. So the breaks. the NB. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, I like that car. It looks so good. It looks I'm a little so bit biased. Happy. I'm yeah. a little bit biased though. So you're saying you like the NB? I think I like it. Okay. You know, like warming up to it. Yeah. It's not bad. That thing getting sideways on track, it just looks so happy. <laughs> it's because that's awesome. what it's really meant yeah. to do. Yeah. It's an asshole hooligan car. That's, that's what it's for. It's got, it's got some great style to it, too. I, I think that you know people people don't really give this NB body style the credit it deserves for being shapely and gorgeous. You know, I was behind it on the way home, and with the garage very tails and the little duckbill spoiler, like it's got this like Panos Esperante kind of vibe going on or something. Like I don't even know if you'd know. Like most people don't. Wouldn't probably know it was a Miata. I get. Got this, I've it gotten asked if it was a Porsche a couple times. Uh, I'm people are so that. stupid. <laughs> I had a guy in a Boxster tell me that like that my Spider was cool, and he's like, "Yeah, he's like, I love mine." And I was huh. like, "Oh, you got an MR2 Spider?" He goes, "No, I got a Boxster." <laughs> like, like, dude, you don't even know your fucking <laughs> own car. <laughs> like, yeah, okay. So people are dumb. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think it's a shapely and beautiful. It's got this Coke bottle kind of you know thing going on, and. Um, I think aesthetically, this car is really working. You've done a lot of nice little touches to it. 
and uh, it's it's super sorted on track. It's it's just a car where you've peeled the onion and it's clear. I um I mean I'm not gonna toot my own horn about the car because I just love the fucking thing to death. Um, but it is beat that and my black FD are my two best examples of a sports car that I've put together to date. Um, that's probably number one. I have the most development, most experience, most track time, most everything in the NB. Um, it's super sentimental to me. I basically like tuned it as like a Miata GT3, inspired a lot by Singer. Por Porsche 911 GT3, like having streetable track performance, but like still some accoutrements and comfort. So that's why I got like the leathers, all the Napa leather, the suede, <laughs> and all the other stuff. It's like just to be a pleasant place to be, but like just a pure enjoyment like driving machine and I love the fucking thing to death so yeah it fits the bill it's got great exhaust note it's got the ITBs have a, have a great song to them yep. um, it's just an overall cohesive experience when you go out in the car it just feels really well sorted and well and, and what's really well cool is like as complete as it is there's still so much more I can do with it mm -hmm. like tubular control arms big brake stuff yep. case swap like there's a lot more still left on the on the cards for it so or you can just leave it the fuck alone because it's awesome. Or you can just leave it the fuck alone. <laughs> I mean, right <laughs> now, right now, other cars. You won't. Yeah. yeah, you won't. But it, I, know. Um, it, I think I think if you left this alone and did nothing more to it, I think that th this is something where I think you could stick a fork in it and really have it just be like, that's as good as it needs to be. I'm happy with that time, that performance. Like it's it's a, I'm just happy with the car. Yeah, you're yeah. right. I don't yeah. have to touch it's, it. It's choice. So, so Tommy's car. Um, Dude, the, the, the K-Swap is a, is a fucking potent patch, package, man. It's really yep. good. Um, and especially in the 24. The 24 has got that stroke, you know. Oh, extra, yeah. Extra, almost half a liter displacement. It's got grunt. It's got that, it's got that. It was gnarly revving that thing up to 8,200. Yeah. With that bigger stroke. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. Just a potent package. I hope he keeps it. Yeah. Um, and just sorts it out. Because <laughs> yeah. I, think, I think in the long run... And Tommy, if you're watching this, I know when you're talking about, you might get rid of it. Like I would keep that car, just sort it out, stick yeah. with it. Like yeah, wait till you see how good that car can be once it's all sorted. That would be a fucking awesome car. Yeah, yep, yeah. yeah. And and the, the, just nothing but the best componentry. Yeah. The stop tech, tech brakes, the Olin suspension, the TE37 mm -hmm. time attacks, like you know, the the Recaros from the from the uh, Jap spec oh, one. I want those seats? They were so they were, oh, they were a great mixture of like hold you and comfort and the stylish that carbon Kevlar uh, construction. I'm sure they're light. Um, just making all the right moves with that build, <clears throat> and with the six-speed and the case swap, and the, you know, bulletproof drive line. Um, once that thing's sorted, it's going to be a really, really kick-ass package. He's got all the ingredients. Yeah, it's everything's there. It just needs the, the fine tailoring, and that's one of the most difficult things <clears throat> about a highly modified street car, especially one where you're fucking Frankensteining it. Like yeah. that motor was not meant to be in there. That transmission was not meant to be in there. Like none of that stuff was supposed to be in there. It's not meant to be in there. Mm -hmm. And it's in there and it just takes time. Yep. But you could get it there. Well, I mean, it's research and development. You got to understand like what these, these cars aren't, this isn't a modified car anymore. This is a car that's built. Yep. And it's, and, and there's something really cool about that. There's, there's, it's not the same thing as, as like, you know, just popping on some parts from eBay. Yeah. It's a, this is a thing where you've re-engineered the car and it takes work to make that work together and to make that something that is is a happy you know it's a happy blend of all these things that, that are not meant to jive once you can get them to communicate and, and play nice with each other it's really it's going to be awesome yep so, so. yeah a really kick-ass car so again three completely <clears throat> different tuning formulas but three awesome ways to get the job done and yeah. that's what's so great about modifying cars is that there's there's no wrong or right answer you well, know. there's some wrong answers. I mean, but for the most part. <laughs> We've all seen the wrong answers, you know? Like, like LS and an FD, I know, Ryan, you're oh. right. <laughs> but, I like that. But I'm, you know what I'm saying, though. Like, the, you can, if you, if you just put the time in and you, and you take the extra effort to, like, really sort the car out, like, you can, you can achieve awesome things. And there's just, there's different tuning paths. And, yeah, and, and you can achieve something that's your vision and that's bespoke and is unique to you. Yeah. And it gives you your experience, and it's a different experience than if you just write a check for something. Yep. It's something that you can you can walk out to and go, I built that. Yep. And that's something that's my vision, and it's it's what I wanted. And well, maybe sometimes it's not what you wanted. Sometimes you put it together, you stir it all work. up, and you go, I fucking hate this. Dude, I've redone that car three times. Yeah. Yeah. Like, big yes. big times, like like 
changing a lot of stuff. Yeah. It takes time. Yeah. It's um, like an evolutionary process. Um, but I love seeing the result. You know, yeah. that's what that's, it's like, that's the addiction is like, once you see the whole vision come together and you see the completed product, you're like, fuck yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's unbelievably fulfilling. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it can't be duplicated by, you know, by yeah. any other means, I don't think. Um, and, and at the end of the day, you've, you've got a car that, that it gives you feelings that uh, in order to kind of replicate some of those feelings, you'd have to spend stupid money. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, what would you have to spend to have something that's put together like this car is put together? I'm over thirty thousand dollars into that. I think I no, but I mean to, to go to a dealership and write a check and oh, have, you can't, and have you something. Oh, you can't buy that. Yeah. I mean, it, you, you, built, you, not bought. That's the saying, right? Yeah. But I mean, I, I'm, I'm saying in, in terms in terms of We'd be like, of its what, performance, like GT350 its soul, maybe. Oh, you can yeah. you could buy something to match that time, yeah. but like, yeah. can but, you buy something that gives you that like experience? Yeah. That's the, yeah. that's the key is the experience, you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's, there's cars that are soulful. You know what I mean? There's, there's oh, cars yeah. that do all these different things. Um, there's awesome out tremendous of the box money, stuff. right? Big you money. know, tremendous. I think I think if you wanted to replicate this experience in this way, I think it's a hundred thousand dollar car if you went to the dealership and bought something. You know, you got, oh, if you wanted like something like yeah, that. Yeah, you just want to go to the dealership, the box, yeah. have something that's turnkey that has that emotion, that has that communication, that has that feel and that build quality, I think it's a $100,000 car. Um, and, you know, and you probably can't get something nowadays that's not so isolated and vague mm -hmm. because all this new shit is just about iPod connectivity, so. Which that's a great topic for our next podcast. Yep. So guys, let's end this one here and we'll go into uh, analog cars and on the next podcast episode. Yeah. So, that could be a stimulating conversation. Yeah. Thank you all very much for tuning in. And we're going to wrap this one up here. Thanks, right. guys.